Hi, everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we're coming to you today live from the final, third and final day of ITW 2024 here in National Harbor. I'm Barb Mitchell with JSA, and I am pleased to be joined by John Celentano, who is a greener data author. So we're going to be talking about that, but also business editor of Inside Towers. John, so nice to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate being an author. I, uh, I had a chance to see Greener Data 1, and I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> we need to talk about some of the other parts of the ecosystem. Right, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And so that's where I, I started. appreciate that. And really appreciate you making the effort to come and talk to us this morning. Sure. Disappointed not to have seen you, you know, earlier in the week, but I know it's a busy, busy time. And um, just very much are grateful for you to, yeah. to come chat with us this morning. Uh, the good news is there's lots going on in the industry. Yes, so it's, uh, uh, it's It's all good. Yeah. So before we dive into your chapter, tell us a little bit about your work at Inside Towers. Yeah, I'm business editor of Inside Towers. It's a daily newsletter that uh, covers the, we used to call it the wireless infrastructure business. Now we call it the digital infrastructure business. Uh, Towers is in our name, but we cover all aspects of um uh, infrastructure, including towers and fiber and data centers and small cells and edge infrastructure and power. Um, uh, you know, we cover the the wireless carriers. We cover the the vendors, uh, regulatory scene, both domestically and internationally. And um, uh, I, I look at the business aspects of all of that. So yeah. So tell us about your chapter. I mean, as you said, you know, it's our second volume just launched on Earth Day. It, virtually, but we had, um, yesterday, we had a, a bit of a celebration with some yeah. of the authors. Again, yeah. sad you couldn't uh, be there to join, but really want to give you the chance now to tell us a little bit more about your contribution. Well, I did look over last year's uh, volume when I was here, and I noticed that, it, you know, being data center centric, I thought, well, the, you know, I think it, to round out the, the discussion, it would be good to have a, a piece that looks at other portions of the ecosystem. So I'm very familiar with what goes on at towers and yeah. how to how they're built, how they're operated, uh, the shared infrastructure model that they use with their tenants who are their wireless carriers. And certainly sustainability and and, and building and operating uh, green towers is, is an issue that's before the operators. And uh, so that's what I chose to write about. And the title of the chapter is Achieving Sustainability at Cell Towers. And, but I, I delve into you know, the components of what does a cell tower comprise, who's on it, and who does what part, and then what can they be doing individually to achieve a greener goal. So on that note, we, you know, obviously, really interesting, as you said, to, I mean, you had mentioned that, you know, our, our first the first volume of this greener data was was i think half the size it feels like me i'm looking at it i think maybe a third of the size um and so there was so much more to be explored and so much exactly. more to be said and and with your sort of insights uh, around towers can you let's let's go a bit further with that and just mm -hmm. sort of if you wouldn't mind talking about what are some of the developments around cell towers that are impacting sustainability well, first of all, we have a lot of cell towers. I, I mean, I've been in the business a while, and I'll be driving along with my, my family, and I'll be pointing out the cell towers, yeah. and they'll go, Dad, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But cell towers are um, uh, uh, part of our uh, society. They enable mobility and use of the devices that we rely on so heavily. Um, over time, we've seen the evolution, not so much in the towers, which are passive structures, and there's pretty much fixed designs and the height may change or the type of tower may change, but what's being added to them, the radios and the antennas, and all of that is that which consumes energy and then is able to deliver signals to us on our mobile devices. That's been, that's changed. That's evolved in with, through the various generations. And we talk about 3G and 4G and now we're at 5G and there's already designs for 6G. Yeah. And the idea is that we're getting um, uh, faster speeds uh, more bandwidth, we're able to consume more in terms of data and information and streaming services. Um, that's what's changed. And we, with those, with each evolution, with each generation, we're finding that more equipment is being added to the tower. Yes, it is energy efficient, but it's driving a lot more throughput. And so there's a, an onus on the, on the uh, tower owner and the tenants themselves to 
strive to deliver that throughput in the most efficient, energy efficient manner. Right. So we see it's, that we see that evolving all, um, almost it's, almost daily. Yeah, and it's. I mean, you touched on a couple of things there that we've been hearing a lot this week just about power, you know, the need yeah. for power and, and how are all of these things um, equipped to to support the growing demand. But mm. so what do you see the future really for cell towers? Well, we're going to need more of them. Yeah, uh, that's not changing. No. Right? And there's this concept called densification of the network. So right now we have towers that are in located in strategic areas to provide wide coverage. But as data consumption goes up, um, the amount of data per user goes up, and so to deliver strong signals, the carriers are what we refer to as densifying the network. So they're either building new towers between existing towers, or they're putting in what we call small cells, uh, which are equipped on street lights and utility poles. So you have a signal almost at street level. Um, so that's the evolution that that base of towers. Um, of all types is going to continue to grow as the the data ramps up and certainly with AI driving a lot of that we're going to have to ramp that up but the, the challenge is can we do it in an energy efficient manner and that's not easy but it's being done. Yeah and I, I was going to ask so you I mean you ha have the opportunity to talk with a lot of people across the mm -hmm. industry do you feel like things are moving in that right direction? Yeah I do uh, I, I just the reason I wasn't here yesterday is because I was at a, a telecom conference in, in Atlanta, yeah. ConnectX, and there was a lot of discussion about uh, the growth of the business and the industry, the, the, the impact of AI, the interconnection of these various pieces of the ecosystem between the data center and the fiber networks that connect everything and the yeah. towers themselves. You know, a lot of the output of AI is going to be ultimately delivered to mobile devices. Right. So that's yeah. going to drive the need for a very robust edge infrastructure by way of towers. And um, we want to ensure that, that, you know, they all consume power at those sites. We want to ensure that that's done in the most energy efficient manner possible. Yeah, I mean, these conversations are so important and because things aren't slowing down. I mean, that's what, one of the things that did come from the... the well, look, look at the size of the books, right? And I know. From when right, you're, yeah. That's indicative of the growth in, in this business, exactly. right? Exactly. So. And also indicative of the the focus and the thinking that's happening with, with people, I think. Yes. Right? People are Absolutely. trying to find the right solutions to enable this growth in a positive way. And, and there's a dollar figure attached to all of it. Right. I mean, yeah. we don't have unlimited capital expenditures. Uh, we don't have unlimited resources to run these networks um, uh, without being cognizant of the cost to do so. Yeah. And and that kind of is our, our guardrails in terms of how quickly and, and how how much we deploy in, in the network. Yeah. Um, so it's a balance between achieving certain performance goals, achieving sustainability goals and you know, the cost to do all of that. Yeah. We, um, <coughs> excuse me, we um, I, I so much appreciate you coming to chat with us today. And uh, are you, hopefully you're going to make the most of your day here. You uh, lots I'm going to be here. Lots yeah, of talk, people to talk to. There's still a full day ahead of us, right? Yeah, There's talking to a few people. There's still a lot to do. Yeah. So. so, Jay, thank you. Any parting words you want to? Well, I think the, the, the future is bright in the sense that it's not slowing down. Um, the demand for um, us as consumers, our demand as consumers for more data in all forms uh, continues to escalate uh, at the enterprise level and at the government level, it continues to escalate. So the need to, for infrastructure to support all of that, right from the data centers all the way down to the edge at the towers, is just going to continue. And I, I think in that regard, I think our industry is... Uh, has got some very big positives that we can look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of great things happen here. Yeah, for sure. I think so. <laughs> thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in again to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Until next time, stay tuned.